In today's video, what we're going to do is fully focus on binge eating, talk about how to potentially prevent it, and what to actually do in the case when you actually do binge. So before we get into my tips that I follow myself to try and eliminate or at least limit me binge eating as frequent, because just in case you don't know, I used to binge eat, I used to do quite frequent, now it's every so often. I want to actually break down what actually is class as binge eating because on my Instagram when I posted this, a good proportion of people were saying that, oh, I binge eat myself on the weekend, I'll have like a cheat meal and that's my binge for the week. And I'm like, that's not binge eating. Binge eating is more uncontrollable. It's almost like the food's in front of you. No matter how full you are, you just constantly keep eating to the point you damn near feel sick. And binge eating can also have higher levels of like eating disorder, for example, the people that usually try and compensate for it will vomit the next day potentially, or try and fast for the next two days, try and balance out the calories. So in this video, what I'm going to do is use myself as a case study and basically go over what I used to do when I used to binge eat. I can't believe that my stomach looks that big. So bloated. And the kind of hacks and stuff that I kind of do now. And the biggest, biggest, biggest one I can advise is do not keep the trigger foods in your house. So all those foods that kind of set you off and you binge eat uncontrollably, don't keep them in your cupboards because it's just setting yourself up for failure. And I know some people do say, oh, you should learn to balance and fit them in. But with the trigger foods, I don't risk it. I don't have them in the house because my willpower is just so low that if it gets late night and I get a bit peckish, I'll take one out of the packet. And next thing I know, I've destroyed the whole bag. For example, my main trigger foods would be brownies, pancakes, waffles. To me, these are like 10 out of 10. So those type of trigger foods, I don't keep my house. I still have them infrequently, like every so often, but I'll just buy one, eat it, and then that's it. I wouldn't buy a big multi-pack and put it in my house because I know what I'm like. But there's other foods I still enjoy, but I can manage and not be such a binger. For example, I love popcorn, but I don't mind having these in my house because to me, popcorn is like a seven slash eight out of 10. These type of foods, I can eat those and know when to stop. Whereas the other foods like the pancakes and waffles and stuff and the brownies, I will just keep eating it like an idiot. So but yeah, the main thing is, is don't have the trigger foods just that easily accessible. The next tip that I highly advise is having some low calorie snack options in your house. Like sometimes you may have the itch like, oh, I want something sweet, but you don't necessarily need like a pack of Haribo. For me, when I have a sweet tooth, I have the little zero calorie jellies. They taste really, really good. You know, let me go, okay. All right, people, these little jellies here, each pot is five calories, and I have two at a time, so every time I get that kind of sweet craving, these fulfill it, because they are very, very, very sweet, and five calories per one, that's 10 calories for two. That's fine. In reality, I could have four. There's been days when I've had four. So having things like that in your house can really help you from like going over the top. So things like that can really save you. Obviously, I also class the popcorn in that as well. I also have a lot of fruits, so raspberries, strawberries, blueberries. They also can hit the sweet tooth as well. If you're someone that works somewhere, whether it's an office or you're studying, and the people around you often eat the foods that you class as trigger foods, I know it feels kind of awkward, but if they're someone you see daily and they always offer you the stuff, just kind of pull them to the side and go, by the way, I'm trying to cut down how frequent I eat these type of foods. Can you please not offer it to me because my low willpower, I know it sounds awkward, but you should do it. I had to do it literally just two weeks ago. Basically, I work a nine to five desk job. Every single day, people bring in snacks. If you work in a desk job, you know that's the job. There's not always an area in the kitchen where everyone just piles on snacks. And I always avoid all the snacks. They always bring in like just chocolate, sweets, and things like that. And they started saying to me, why don't you ever eat any of the snacks? And I went, in honesty, the easy way I stay in shape is snacks and treats I don't actually like that much like chocolates I just won't eat if you offer it to me I'll just say no thank you because that's just foods I don't even want the foods that sort of set me off are things like the brownies the waffles so I told them my list but what they started doing and they thought it was a nice gesture which it was at first the lady next to me started buying me brownies like homemade brownies from the cafe next door and they were delicious so double chocolate caramel brownies she gave me the brownies I ate them and I said thank you that was done now the next day came and she done the same thing again. She went and bought me more brownies. Me with my low willpower, I ate it again. It came on to day three. She went and bought the brownie again. Bear in mind, they're really big as well. They're that big brownies. And it's gotten to day four now. She's boarding me again. And I'm like, and I can't say no. My willpower 
um, really can't say no. So that's four days in a row of having double chocolate caramel brownies. And there was one day she bought me two because the person opposite me wasn't in that day. So she goes, oh, you can have both the brownies. And I ate both. So it got to a point where I could see it was happening. I'm getting taste for brownies again. I was going to get to the point where I wasn't going to be able to stop. So I had to nip it in the bud as soon as I could. So I just said to her, thank you for the brownies you bought me this week. I'm not sure if you're going to, but in case you were thinking to buy me one tomorrow, please can you not? I do love brownies and I'm thankful that you, you offered to buy me them damn near daily. I said once in a while is fine, but you buying it like four or five days in a row is a bit overkill. And it was only like a one to two minute conversation, but that really helped because now she stopped bringing them in. But the main thing I want to point out is the fact that when she was giving them to me, I couldn't refuse them. And I'm someone that people will class as the really healthy guy. Like at work, they call me the fitness guy, the healthy guy. He never eats anything bad, which isn't necessarily true. As soon as someone offered me something I would class as my trigger food, it used to set me off to the point where I wouldn't stop eating them. Another tip is if you feel like a binge is coming on and you almost feel like you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna actually just have this food. Try and at least have them as my last thing of the day. So then eat your meal first and drink a fair amount of water. The reason for this is because you wanna make your body feel somewhat full. And the chances are if you eat your proper meal and drink water, your belly's gonna be more cramped. So even if you do binge, you've basically not consumed the full amount of calories, which wouldn't set you off too, too far. Another good tip is try and have food prepared. Like if you have already the meal in your fridge ready to eat, you're less likely to go out of your way because even if it comes down to a financial reason of you saying, I bought all those ingredients, I don't wanna waste my money, that has saved me a couple of times. Finally, this one's a little bit unorthodox, and but this is what I personally do. When there's times when I feel like just going nuts with food, like just absolute, just stupid, just like eating non-stop, for example, for me an example of have actually done in the past would be a super large pizza, like probably two bags of like the large cookies, maybe a few Krispy Kreme donuts, full KA bottles of drink, so like one of those in itself which is a crazy amount of calories, and then sometimes like an ice cream. So that's like a bunch of stuff so I kind of eat in one sitting and usually two massive bags of popcorn, not these little ones, like the full on big packs of popcorn which is quite a lot to just fit into your stomach. So that's looking at roughly, probably about 5,000 calories. Bear in mind a typical day for me on average is only around 2,000 calories. But on those days when I feel like having that much food, I'll more or less say to myself, okay, I need to do the lesser of two evils. I want this, but I need to try and meet in the middle. So I normally go, okay, why is something that I don't have regular, but I love the taste of, which will hopefully satisfy this need. So that for me can be something like bacon, big nice thick bagels, get some maple syrup and eggs and I dip it in and I eat it. That roughly is probably more around the um, 700 to 1000 calories can I normally have two of them. That's something I wouldn't typically be able to fit into a normal day of macros for me but it's still the lesser of two evils so at least going for that hasn't put me up that four or five thousand calorie threshold I was going to hit. The whole point is, is that I didn't go for the, the, the epicness that I wanted. I just had like What's that phrase Greg Doucette says? I had the least amount of food that made me happy that day. So the food still kind of satisfied my kind of, my binge brain because I feel like I'm eating quite a lot of food that I wouldn't normally have. But it didn't set me up for complete absolute failure. So that is something I'd recommend as well. But this is the last resort. This isn't something you go to from the get go. This is like when all the other methods have failed and you're gonna binge, just try and minimize the amount that you do. So those I would say are probably my main tips to try and prevent binge eating. But now what I'm gonna cover is what to do if you actually did binge. So all those tips I just said, if you, all of them just failed and you actually did binge, how do you approach the next day and how do you recover and what's your mindset should be like? My biggest advice would be don't be too hard on yourself and don't be one of those people that try and counteract it by trying to do, I don't know, two hours on the cardio machine trying to get back the calories you ate and overkill it. If you want to do some cardio, that is fine because that will help with the, the rise in sodium, aka your water intake in your body that make you bloat up. But don't try and do two hours of cardio if you only typically would do 30 minutes. It's just not smart. My biggest, easiest advice would be the very next day, eat naturally because you'll often find that on a day when you pig out and you binge a bit too much, the following day, you're not as hungry. That is fine. 
The problem is, is when people try and purposely starve themselves, so they are hungry and they purposely will avoid eating to try and balance it out. That is not a clever or smart thing to do. But if you wake up the next day, you're naturally not as hungry as you normally are. It's purely because you ate so much calories the day before. So it's fine then to just eat naturally, like as and when you're hungry, eat food. Try and make sure each food still has a certain level of protein in it because that's just, if you're on a games path, that just makes sense, period. But I wouldn't be one of those people that purposely try and starve themselves, or further yet, which is more on the eating disorder side, damn near try and vomit themselves up, part of try and balance it out. Just isn't a smart tactic to do. As long as this isn't happening daily, over the course of a week, your body will naturally get back to where it is. So that's my advice if you binge, ease yourself back into eating more naturally. Then once you've got back to your status quo, if you're someone that counts calories, then go back to doing that. But I wouldn't be someone that's literally super, super anal and focused on it to the point where it damn near becomes obsessive and then you start getting eating disorders and obviously you start building a poor relationship with food. But for example, they think of pizza, they class it as a bad food and they'll never have it. Whereas you could have pizza if you balance it in or if you make homemade pizza pizzas there's no one food that's bad so that's firstly something you have to accept you know you shouldn't think of food is good and bad it's all about providing balance obviously binge eating is very person specific so some people can be more severe than others but all i can say is that that has helped me greatly but don't think that you can just avoid binge eating completely because i don't believe anybody on the planet doesn't have at least periods, whether if it's once a year, twice a year, or seven times a year, where well, they do not binge. Like, there's been times when I've sat on that sofa and I've bought like a couple packs of brownies and cookies because I just felt like just eating this type of food. And Koreans watch me damn near eat to excess when I'm sitting on that sofa and I'm just eating without even thinking like I'm full but I'm still eating because it's in front of me and she'll try and take the bag off and put it in the cupboard and I'll go get it and eat it straight away. And then after about an hour, I'll literally drink something and all that carbs in my stomach will just damn near fill up and I feel like my stomach is going to blow up and I'll say to her, oh, I feel cramped, I feel sick and she'll look at me and go, you do this every time you, you have these binge effects and it's just one of those things that's somewhat uncontrollable because obviously sometimes your willpower just doesn't activate. Anyways people, I hope those tips help. If so, please let me know down below. Anyways people, like, comment, subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out people. Stay getting games.